we acknowledge that the land on which Humboldt State University is located is unceded territory of the Wiat people who continue to live and thrive today. It is surrounded by the traditional, ancestral, and present homelands of several indigenous nations, including the Hoopa, Karuk, Matol, Tolawa, Wallachi, and Yurok that make up Humboldt County. Good morning and welcome back to Humboldt State University and spring semester. Humboldt is an amazing place with special people. When I was learning more about Humboldt, the place was described to me as a place that cares. It was also described as a place of family, outdoor enjoyment and sustainability. To me, it is also a place of pride and it is becoming a place of innovation, nibbleness, and collegiality. It is a place that is seeing beyond itself more and more, or to put another way, what we can become as a university versus what we used to be as a university. We are also a place that is very dedicated to our students and wants our students to succeed and to learn. HSU is the community and the community is HSU. This is, in part, what creates this amazing place. Over the next several minutes, I will update you on several major topics, all of them you are aware of, 
all are very transformative for this campus and the community. And all of them are toward evolving campus to best serve California and its students in the coming decades. Some of the things I will raise include COVID and spring planning, the strategic plan, both the sunsetting version and the new and immersion version, emerging version, polytechnic, student clubs and organizations and campus vibrancy, sexual assault prevention committee, North Coast Rape Crisis Team and the work of the Title IX uh, group of individuals. And then lastly, athletics. Before I jump into COVID, I must first thank you. I must secondly acknowledge the continued work of faculty in general and a few specific faculty and their continued research and scholarship. So first, some thank yous. As a child, I would look into the sky at night and see the universe. I would see the occasional cloud. I would see the moon. I would see the stars. Some would flicker, some would still stand still, but together they filled the sky. The work of all of you to help students progress toward their degree while staying safe as a community and campus has been phenomenal. It is an example of a team coming together to do their best in their specific roles to not only survive, but to be true to our collective work. You are those stars shining brightly in the night and filling the sky with dreams and hopes. Again, every single one of you, you are those stars shining brightly in the night. Thank you. Thank you very much. As mentioned, I must also take a moment to point out specific faculty for their continued innovative work. For example, Dr. Jeffrey White in biology, who created a liquid syllabus. This is a dynamic, short, and concise way to provide pre-course contact before the official course start date in an effort to connect to students and then get them off to a successful start. There's also Dr. Young Sub Kwan in kinesiology, who recently participated in a team led by the American College of Sports Medicine to develop online teaching tools for exercise science instructors across the country to use for virtual learning. The team identified and created dozens of videos for a repository. They also developed a list of core competencies routinely taught in exercise science labs across the United States. Lastly, there's Dr. Janet Winston in English. Dr. Winston created a wisdom wall activity that had students think through the question, what kind of online learner am I? It is a low stakes activity that prompts metacognition, creates connection among students and the instructor and provides the instructor with important information about each student. To our faculty, all of you, thank you. Let's shift to COVID and emergency operations. Three years ago, imagine, imagine a time three years ago, what an emergency looked like to you. For some, it was very real fire or a very real fire and evacuation from that fire. For some, it was the very real earthquake. For others, it may have been the loss of life. Today, our continuing emergency remains COVID. Yes. We are in a crisis and we remain in an emergency. Let us not forget it. We fall asleep thinking about COVID planning and we wake up thinking about it. As a CSU, all 23 campuses have remained steadfast toward two North Stars, the safety and security of the campus and community and the progression toward a degree for our students. The emergency decisions that are being made hourly create or continue with these two North Stars in mind. And in case you missed the reference, I stated the emergency decisions. Never in our history as a campus have we remained in emergency mode for as long as we have today. 
Since March of 2020, our emergency operations center has been open and functional, making hourly decisions in support of all of us. This is highly detailed work that is also often conflicting and under duress. The work of the ELC should never be taken lightly and has not been. Allow me to thank every EOC member for your continued work in not only keeping campus open, but in also following our North Stars. For me, it was critical that we show our support for our graduating students. I realize we all want to do some things. I see it more through a triage lens. What absolutely must be done to best support our graduating students? Later, you will hear from Academic Affairs more on this topic and some of the details. I'm appreciative of the work of our faculty, the advanced planning team, the fall instruction transition team, and many others for finding creative ways to do what must be done. There are so many units who are on the front lines of the pandemic for HSU each and every day, but I wanna take a moment to highlight only a few. The Student Health Center is one of them. Our team in the Student Health Center worked tirelessly for our campus and students. They evaluated, tested, treated, monitored, and coordinated closely with public health to ensure our students and campus were safe. Another, OSNAP. OSNAP ensured our students were fed each and every day, including during the holiday season. Residential life and housing. Like most working in residential life and housing, this was a very difficult time with the modifications to move in and the movement of students into quarantine and or isolation. Finding ways to ensure students still had virtual face-to-face -face instruction, engagement and activities while still on campus was very important. And then custodians. Our custodial staff, they have been in our buildings cleaning and sanitizing our campus to ensure we limit the exposure of COVID for our workforce and students. This is not all inclusive. And we know that we have administrators, faculty and staff and students who have sacrificed, adjusted and showed up to ensure our campus was operational and that our students were able to have a great educational experience. As we embark on the spring semester, we will continue to make decisions in a manner that prioritizes safety and student success. To everyone, I say thank you. I also want to share uh, a thought about many of our donors. Even during the pandemic, our donors have continued to provide important support. Since last July, about $3 million has been committed with major gifts to support programs and scholarships in areas like the library, art, nursing, engineering, food systems, and more. Also in the fall, nearly 200 donors gave $21,000 on Giving Tuesday. The athletics auction went virtual and raised more than $31,000. Donors gave nearly $7,000 to support students who were affected by wildfires and campus and alumni sponsors provided holiday gifts for more than 120 children as part of the Winter Wishes program. Thank you to everyone who gave to support HSU students. Now let's talk a little strategic planning. When I first entered higher education in the 1980s, the campus and the corporate norms were for strategic plans to be in the 10 year range. Somewhere along the way, they were 10 years with five year renewals or updates. Today, we have a five year plan with basically semesterly updates and annual corrections and dashboards. The times are different and the importance of progressing toward institutional effectiveness and improvement is very clear and deliberate. To put this another way, at one time, 
HSU may have been able to enjoy a decade or two to pursue goals. That period is long gone. This is our moment. This is our time. This is when we, as one family, truly focus upward and outward and in support of each other. There's less time to belittle, fight inwardly, and hold on to us and them have and have nots or one department versus another. The stakes are simply too high today in the times in which we are living. This is our moment and the strategic plan is a magic part of how we will look upward and outward. Later, we will go over our progress in addressing items needed for our continued accreditation. We will also discuss more of the strategic plan process and the themes within the draft plan as of today. There's still work to be done, but it is progressing well in large part because of Mary Vinash, Lisa Von Maupin, and Cherie Gordon. These three individuals are carefully guiding this process along with many others. I remain optimistic in how we will transform the draft strategic plan that will guide our future work for decades. I encourage each of you to review the collective work of the steering committee and provide your feedback by January 15th you can go to strategicplan.humboldt.edu. For right now, as I've said in the past, I want us to celebrate everything. And today, that means celebrating the things we have been able to do the past five years under the guidance of our outgoing strategic plan. An article will be forthcoming showcasing how we have evolved over the past five years there have been many positives. One such positive is the growth in our external funding efforts. Over the last three years, faculty and staff have submitted an average of 261 grant and contract proposals per year. Of those proposed, 181 per year were awarded for an annual average total of 29 million. As a campus, We tended to look at the clouds in a sunny day versus a sunny day with a few clouds. But this is our moment now to reflect on the wonderful good that has occurred the past few years. Now a little polytechnic. Since announcing that we have the opportunity to develop a plan toward becoming California's third polytechnic university the discussions and comments have gone something like this. This is amazing. You've always been a polytechnic without the designation or another. You are already a learn by doing campus with the foundation on sustainability with or when combined with your liberal arts, you will create a new generation of graduates for California. There's another that says, what will your colors be? Will they stay the same? Will the mascot stay the same? And then finally, what will you call yourself? And that's probably the one that will be most interesting. Down in the details, I believe people understand that we will be innovative and forward thinking in our approach to grow degrees in areas that citizens of California are seeking. Without question, this means additional engineering programs and technology programs. It also means collaborative programs in agriculture and other applied sciences, including health professions. The work on the academic blueprint is inspiring and it will help evolve campus in ways that we have yet to fully imagine. As a campus, we have been provided arguably the greatest opportunity in our history as a university to transform our campus further as a polytechnic, thus stabilizing enrollment the funding, our national ranking, alignment with the community and employers, greater internships for students, and faculty research. It is an amazing opportunity. Again, it is our moment. It is a moment we cannot falter upon, but one we, as a campus and community, must, absolutely 
must a centaur. There have been two town halls on Polytechnic with more discussions to follow. There will also be an abundance of sharing information. <clears throat> and already there are several committees in place to complete this inspiring and historical work over the next semester. Later in this presentation, more information will be shared. But for now, this is our new guiding star as a campus. This is Humboldt as one family putting its best forward in defining what we believe excellence to be. This is us as one family setting the terms for our success over the next several decades. This is us, just like the thousands of people in 1913 supporting the efforts to have a campus in Humboldt County. This is our moment. Now shifting to student clubs and organizations. To some, the strength of a campus is defined by its endowment. To some others, it is the graduation rate. Still others, it may be its acceptance rate. I believe one that is almost nearly always overlooked and critically important is the strength and the growth of student clubs and organizations. The lifeblood of the student experience is clubs and organizations. This is where 6,000 students become 10 students. This is where students find their support group, their campus home, their purpose, their trusted advisor, their best friends, an adventure, a place to spend their disposable time and maybe even their life's partner. Clubs and organizations set the tone for student involvement on campus, student engagement on campus, student retention, and campus vibrancy. While it can be organic, it is extremely deliberate. It is the nucleus of student learning and the nucleus of today's student learning initiatives. Humboldt has over 140 clubs and organizations. Others can say how this figure might compare to our benchmark, but what is important is each of these clubs and organizations is a group of individuals that are self-guiding their experience along with usually one staff faculty advisor helping to create a positive, meaningful, educational experience for a student. Our student clubs and organizations include the Cycling Club, the Vegan Club, Brothers United, Redwood Debate, Newman Center, the Queer Student Union, and dozens of others. Now I'm gonna ask each of you to reflect upon your most memorable experience that you have had in college. If you would take 15 seconds to think about one of the most memorable moments you had in college, go ahead, take 15 seconds. If I were with you in person, I would probably first ask, was this a memory based on a legal activity? Assuming it was, and I'm guessing that this experience for nearly all of you did not occur inside the classroom, but instead on an athletic field, during a hike, at a club meeting, in a residence hall, or a drive to someplace with others. That is the college experience and clubs and organizations cultivate that in meaningful ways. There are two groups I'm about to mention that have found ways to continue their efforts and serve others during our pandemic. One is Hermanas Unidas and the other is the Student Veterans Association. Hermanas Unidas strives to provide leadership opportunities and resources to predominantly Latinx Chicanx women providing a home away from home and empower their members to grow as individuals and professionals as they attain their degree. This organization has continued to host movie nights, trivia nights, study hours, and other social events as a way to engage their members and to help encourage other students to join their organization. On another front, members of the Student Veterans Association immediately set up networks of service and support for their members when COVID hit. 
Their sense of responsibility to and for one another as veterans has informed their service approach. This group continues to deliver food to their members in need and to share information and resources through a, a very special Facebook group called Vets COVID-19 Response Team. To our clubs and organizations, please keep up the great work and support for all our students. Now, not long ago, I was online completing the sexual harassment training. This is something we all must do on campus and a reminder that despite our well-intended efforts as a campus to educate individuals about sexual assault, we are far from utopia. HSU has come a long ways under the leadership of David Hickox and Cherie Gordon. Months ago, through an audit, we learned we could improve our Title IX efforts. We also learned many of our supportive limitations could be addressed by increasing the personnel available and improving their training to best respond to Title IX grievances. We have done that. We have also come a long ways because of the efforts of the Sexual Assault Prevention Committee and North Coast Rape Crisis Team. This again is our moment. This is our moment to advocate and act against violence. This is our moment to collectively work toward the total elimination of sexual assault. And this is our moment to educate, learn, and support each other. Lastly, I'm gonna say a word about athletics and the student athlete. I ran track in college long before the internet. Even then, I knew I was an athlete and a major part of my success on campus in the classroom and with my friends, it had a lot to do with personal team relationships, my coach, and the support of my teammates on the track and throughout school. Imagine, imagine, because of COVID, you were prohibited from teaching. No teaching. I'm not talking about face-to-face -face or virtual. I'm talking about no teaching, zero. You could still do scholarship on your own. You might be able to do research if you did not include others. But as far as teaching, that was prohibited. Imagine that. In essence, that is what we have done with our student athletes. We have asked these students to come to this campus, to be a part of a sports team, to support one another, to train and improve themselves, to attend class and to be model citizens, but they cannot play or compete. They are prohibited from doing so. For our spring teams, there is that potential that there will be two seasons lost. This is not akin to being prohibited to teach for a single semester. This is akin to being prohibited from teaching for two years. Why am I bringing this up? Because I admire our student athletes and our coaches for modeling true collegiality, true campus support, and true collegial support. Despite the creativity and desire to train and compete, we have found new ways to engage and support each other positively. Despite losing seasons, we have found ways to help each other as a family within a family. That department and those within it have modeled true sportsmanship and support for each other. And I'm acknowledging it right now for all of you to see and know. HSU Athletics is currently a finalist for the 2021 Division II Award of Excellence an accolade recognizing initiatives in the past year that exemplify the Division II philosophy, community engagement, and student athlete leadership. Nicely done. In closing, and as I've stated each time I've done this, I ask the following. Number one, to recommit to serving students the best way we know how. We are one family and one team. Number two, maintain a contagious positive attitude. Number three, focus on what we have and not what we do not. 
We can evolve and it is okay to evolve. Number four, get out of your comfort zone and find a new one. And certainly COVID has forced us to do this. Number five, help sell our university. And number six, enjoy your colleagues and students. As a child, I would look into the sky at night and see the universe. I would see the occasional cloud. I would see the moon. I would see the stars. Some would flicker, some would stand still, but together they filled the sky. We fill that sky and inspire many to dream. We are humbled. Have a fantastic semester and remain safe. Thank you.